looks like we've got a small issue with a pallet changer on the front, some error. I need to take a look. Ta da! So here we are inside the compact range from Hecate. Now I'm with Lee Scott. He's the other side of the wall, um, or I should say the divide here on this machine. Uh, we're going to learn about some of the features and benefits of this particular product from Hecate. Um, Lee, before we start talking about the machine, they could have thought of a place for me to put my feet. Well, I'm okay this side, Paul. Is that because you're smaller than me? or I'm Only by an inch or two. <laughs> okay, so tell us about this machine range then, Lee, because we've been focusing in... Uh, on this over the last couple of days. Um, it's going to be a popular seller for you, isn't it? We hope so, yeah. I mean, th this is the, the new compact range. This is the smallest machine in the compact range. Not that small, though, is it? No, no it's not. Actually, there's plenty of room in here. Now, the purpose of the uh, introduction of the compact range, Lee, describe that to us. Th this is an output from listening to customers. So we, we went to the market and said, look, what could we do better? if we were going to introduce a new machine. So it's a more compact footprint. It's got more, uh, more options available. A lot of choice on spindles, power, torque, speed, table options. And uh, it can take a bit of weight on the table, clearly, from, <laughs> from, from me sitting on it. Um, Lee, now for those that can't see behind us, this is a five axis machine. It's a horizontal spindle. Obviously, dual pallet, you're sitting on one, uh, I'm sitting on the other. Um, this configuration of machine, who does it suit? It suits everybody. I mean, it's designed for all different material groups and for, for all different industries. I mean, key industries for us are aerospace, energy, uh, transport and industrial markets. But we, we, we could manufacture any type of component on this machine. And I want to now talk about the construction of it, because uh, where we're obviously seated on, on the pallet is a, a hugely important, important part of the, uh, the build of the machine. Equally is the five axis table that we have behind us. Could you maybe walk us through how it moves and how it's built and why that's important um, and why Hecate de decided to uh, you know, configure the machine in this way? Sure. The, and the I'll ask number one that question. The, the, the base itself is, is a mineral cast base. It's very um, vibration absorbing and it's also very stable uh, in, in terms of temperature. So it doesn't move around. The column sits on top of the base on wide guideways with the spindle housed in the column. The table groups, like a bridge, sits on two very widely spaced guideways, so very stable. And then on top of the, 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 the table mounting, we either sit a, a single table, a B-axis table, all direct drive or a trunnion as, as you can see with this machine so, so the two axes sit on a very heavy duty trunnion system now what divides us here um, if you kind of extended this as a line right the way through to, to where the spindle is and took the left and right hand side of the machine they're both equal aren't they and I'm really specifically talking here in terms of the the, the table behind us where um, the part is uh, machined that's correct and how important is it? It's really important. The, the machine is completely symmetrical so if you take the trunnion table itself what's unusual with this machine compared to others on the market is the table is held by a, a, a large bearing system up both sides. It's clamped at both sides. It's extremely rigid. If you look at others on the market they may be held one side or they've got a large bearing one side and a small centre the other. So it's extremely important for heavy duty machining doesn't lose any speed it's ex it's extremely agile and it's super accurate uh, so it's very quick it's very fast super accurate as you say um, one of the important parts of a machine and you've made this quite clear to me over the last couple of days is, is the spindle that's where the the, the, the cuttings done isn't it that's a, the heartbeat of the machine in a sense um, sure. you pay a lot of attention to making sure there's not only a lot of options but there's a lot of technology there to make sure you get the best out of that area well, inside all the spindles, we, 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 we measure vibration. We've got sensors, so we can measure any, any anomalies that are coming through the cutting process. There's a choice of spindle size, so a 63, HSK 63 or 100 or an equivalent uh, BT or IT taper system. There's a number of spindles through the motor spindle range, 10,000 to 30,000 revs, or, or a gear spindle range with very high torque, up to over 2,000 newton meters torque from six to twelve and a half thousand revs so it's a lot of variety 
in the spindle options so you can really optimise the cutting process for specific material types. And there's a lot of standard features in there as well that ensure um, you're able to get feedback to, you know, as to how the spindle's performing to make sure you keep getting the best part. That's an important, um, important part of the technology that uh, the Hecate range is offering. Um, I also want to talk about the, the actual, the, the key to this, Lee, is why should people buy this style of machine? And, you know, it's great us sitting here and me not being able to see you, but this is clearly to attract attention um, in machine shops and get engineers to think differently, isn't it? Because that's really what we've done here. By opting for the horizontal style machine with four or five axis is something that is not adopted enough in machine shops and should be, isn't it? Well, it is for sure. And, and we, we, we really favour the horizontal spindle over the vertical spindle. The chips flush away. There's a huge, um, a huge chip swarf conveyor underneath the machine. There's no swarf traps. Everything's open and accessible. Like I said before, it's thermosymmetrical. It's very powerful, but it's also built to a budget. The, the designers were tasked with not losing any of the Hecate famous functionality, but putting the machine into the market that was also very competitive as well. Yeah, uh, clearly, and that's a big, big part of our push here. Um, you can come and see this machine. It's at the Nikon Innovation Center. Uh, and you can come and see it in action. You can look at the HMI interface, see how easy it is to operate, and talk to the guys at Starag about how maybe you could change the way you manufacture parts. With this style of machine, you can increase productivity, you can make parts faster. And what else can you do, Lee? You can do anything, Paul, absolutely anything. So what, what I would suggest is people talk to us, they throw us components, they let us look at what they're doing, and, and let, 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 let us tell you how we would do it on this type of machine. Okay, so uh, contact the Starag group about this machine. Um, I was told yesterday by Lee, and it's probably a good way to end this, that this machine will help you win more work and make more money. Um, now, I'm not sure whether I would actually um, select uh, the person that's behind the other side at this stage, because uh, I can't see what they look like, but I do like the narrative, Lee. So, yeah, I think on this occasion, I will take you.